Hello YouTube, it's Lion here with Hobbies of a Man once again, and today we're going to do another manga review. Now today's manga review is going to be on One Piece, um, well, this one, One Piece Volumes 1, 2, and 3, this is the first omnibus, it's written by Eiichiro Oda, this is uh, published by Viz Media, as you guys can see, it's a Shonen Jump title, these are the cheap 3-in-1s, uh, which are significantly floppier than one volume of this. The the genres are adventure and fantasy. You could call this some sort of flintlock fantasy, maybe, or a pirate fantasy. Uh, actually, it could also be considered an epic fantasy because this is a, a different world. Uh, it has magic and it has power systems and, you know, a lot of stuff that needs to be ex uh, explained to the reader through exposition. Um, and it's uh, supposedly very deep lore, although I haven't read much besides this, so I wouldn't know exactly. Um, and this is a shonen title, obviously, Shonen Jump, right there. Uh, this does have a manga adaptation. It's currently available on Hulu, I think, or Crunchyroll, and it just came onto uh, Netflix. Uh, which is only a couple, like the first three seasons, if I remember correctly. But yeah, it's uh, available on different platforms if you guys want to watch it. I haven't watched it myself. I couldn't get into it as a kid. Uh, mostly because whenever it came out, it was like random episodes and I had no clue what was going on. So, very quickly, I look at five things in my reviews. I look at the plot, the characters, the world building, the art, and the fan service. Uh, the first three are my objective take on the book, kind of. Uh, it's not really exactly objective, but it's as close as I can get. Uh, the art is my opinion, and the fan service is a kind of warning to anyone that's uh, not into that. Yeah, uh, let's start with the premise here. Really, uh, this covers two and a half arcs. The first two and a half arcs of the series. Uh, the first volume uh, in the book, I think it's like a third of it up to like... Uh... Oh, perfect. There. That's... That's the first arc. It's uh, called Romance Dawn. Uh, and in, in that arc, essentially what happens is that you start the journey. There's a prologue basically where uh, Luffy's a child and then he interacts with this pirate character who like teaches him the value of friendship and uh, kind of gives him his dream of being the pirate king. And then you go through one adventure where he kind of starts his uh, journey to be, be a pirate. Uh, he meets two characters, he asks one to join his crew, and he helps the other one out of a shitty situation. And then we have volume two, which, uh, oh, there we go, right there, uh, which covers the Orange Town arc, which is the second arc. Basically, in this arc, uh, he meets this new character who kind of tricks him, but he's interested in getting them on his crew anyways. So he has to basically fight this other pirate off to uh, basically not get killed. And then the last uh, third is the first half of the Syrup Town arc, if I remember correctly, or uh, Syrup Village. Uh, Syrup Village arc, which um, I don't really know what it's about yet, but it introduces a new character that might be on the crew from what I know. Um, but yeah, that's basically all that happens. This is a pretty well-contained set of stories, and it kind of uh, sets up what One Piece is and what it's going to be about uh, very clearly in a way that, you know, makes sense and you can easily understand. Um, because it does have two small arcs and then the beginning of the third one, it kind of shows you clo in, in a closed uh, bubble what everything is about kind of like a microcosm of one piece in the first two arcs and then it kind of starts opening the world for you in the third one uh which would be kind of a different experience if you read it individually but i think the first volume romance dawn arc the romance dawn arc uh definitely encompasses pretty well what one piece seems to be about from what i can tell i'll have to come back and uh you know say this properly at, uh, when I've uh, read a lot more of it. I, I was gonna say finished it, but I, there's, I don't think there's a way for me to finish it when there's like a hundred volumes out already, which I think is like almost a thousand chapters. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. 
Uh, let's jump into the evaluation portion. Basically, the plot is really good. It's really well done because there's three arcs. We do get closed stories. So we get three different climaxes or, or two different climaxes. And the first uh, th third to a half of the next arc so you do get a, uh, a lot of uh, action i guess a lot of tension as well and basically the way that this feels structured to me because i don't know if it's completely true is that there's this main overarching plot point which is become pirate king uh which is you know fair it's kind of like naruto's uh what's it called hokage dream and then we have the the smaller uh, the the less main point but the immediately important point, I guess, is gathering a crew. Because Luffy is a pirate and he needs a crew because he's going to be the captain of a ship. So that's kind of the specific uh, plot points of this uh, saga part of the One Piece story, I guess. I, I assume that East Blue is basically where he meets the majority of his crewmates. Uh, I might be wrong, probably I am wrong, but that seems to be the overarching plot of this specific section of storytelling. Um, and then for each uh, volume, no, for each arc, you kind of have a different plot point. So like the first one, uh, this might be spoilers, but I very much doubt it because you can see them on the covers, is uh, to get Zoro, uh, the, the first arc, Romance Dawn. Uh, introduces Luffy and then the first crewmate which is Zoro or Zolo as they wrote it down in the uh, book and then the second arc Orange Town is getting Nami on the crew and making sure to not die to Boogie which uh fair understandable and then the third one I'm not really sure what it is it I, I it seems to be that the main plot line of the that uh vol um, arc is to uh, save the the town's rich girl and help Usopp do it and that's basically it it's interesting I'm excited to see what happens later and uh, I think this is a good introduction to you know the world of One Piece now the characters are something I'm really a big fan of I really like how distinct and clear each character is and different from each other Zoro is a very interesting like uh, not pirate but like fighter person he wants to be the strongest swordsman. Nami has a lot of mystery and like intelligence to her that really counteracts uh, Luffy and Zoro really well. Uh, Boogie is an interesting villain, although he kind of seems to be the only interesting villain out of the three villains that we see in this book. Uh, mostly because he and Luffy can kind of fight on par with each other. The other two villains seem kind of lame in comparison. Although I don't really want to, you know, get too into it. Uh, the one thing I did notice about Oda is that he really likes delving into the back story of a lot of characters, even if they're basically irrelevant. Uh, you know, the two that come to mind are Kobe and Chow Chow. Now, I'm sure that they, well, at least Kobe will come back later. You kind of get the sense that Kobe and Luffy are going to be two sides of the same coin. Uh, where one of them is a pirate and the other one's a marine and they kind of like are going to be parallels to each other and then maybe have a big confrontation at the end which uh, like I said I could totally be wrong this is just me speculating but it kind of feels like that and it, if it was a shorter series I would totally see that uh, happening like you know they kind of end up being rivals and Kobe learns from Luffy and Luffy doesn't really learn from Kobe but uh, you know Kobe's intelligence kind of plays off uh, against uh, Luffy's uh, natural ability really well and you know you get like an interesting dynamic between them uh, but it, given that it's so long it might be that it's completely wrong and the other character that comes to mind is Chow Chow. Chow Chow is a dog who has like this weirdly important amount of world build or not world character building to him and that really makes you like empathize with the dog in like such a like uh oh god you know kind of like emotional way because it's this dog that is waiting for its owner and has this treasure which is his owner's store but his owner's dead and it's like wow uh, which reminds me i th i think i heard in the one piece virgin podcast which i was listening while i was driving the other day 
um, that there was a specific event that happened in Japan that he was referencing. But, uh, you know, there's there's been real life stories about dogs doing amazing things uh, for those that they consider family. So this one kind of felt really real, I guess, if, if that makes sense. But <laughs> it's a dog and it's like super relevant to the story or at least the main plot point, which I think, uh, or the main plot point of being the Pirate King, you know, it, it, it's super irrelevant to that. But Oda took the time to really develop this dog's character, and I thought it was really good. Uh, the world building is also really interesting. There was uh, not much that I can tell, like, uh, obviously there, there there's a lot, but nothing fe felt that original until they brought up the Grand Line versus the Red Line or something. Because apparently this world is a, a sphere with like one giant strip of land and then two oceans on either side. Uh, that's really cool, actually. And then obviously they, they have the, the the things that give them their powers, which are called gum gum uh, devil fruits, which uh, there's some lore behind them. And then there's monsters and stuff. So uh, there's definitely world building aspects, but nothing that really felt all that interesting until those two things and yeah what else was there um i think that's kind of it uh it, the world building is compelling when you get those tidbits that are really interesting but i don't know if it's a uh, a fact of oda's ability as a writer or or the lack of world building uh, oda's ability as a writer that makes it so that world building seems like it's not there or if it it actually is the lack of world building. But I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, the art here is pretty interesting. Uh, it's not like my favorite, but I, I read Fairy Tale, and Fairy Tale seems to draw a lot of inspiration from One Piece. Um, so I, I kind of already am uh, familiarized with this kind of like tall, stretched out, but still kind of well proportioned uh body type i guess so i didn't find it off-putting but i think it might be something that happens to some people some people not like might not like the weird proportions that uh kind of happen um but i thought it was fine i mean it's a little wonky but you kind of get used to it so it's all good i mean plus the story is compelling enough that the art isn't really a bother it kind of sometimes even merges with the with the story and kind of fits well uh, i think this art style really suits the fact that luffy has like stretchy powers it kind of like helps luffy's character look like it's a stretchy character if that makes sense um and yeah there's no fan service in this which is uh, uh it might be there might be some later i'm not really sure but uh so far there is none so if uh, someone wants to read a couple volumes of one piece uh hoping that there's no fan service these are probably the good ones uh plus you would have to start here if you want to read the story so that's basically it my rating for this book is a solid five out of five um well it's between a 4.5 and a five and really the only issue that i had with this book is that i didn't like Usopp, <laughs> which <laughs> i i understand that i haven't finished his uh original his uh introductory arc so I might not uh, really know him yet, but just the, the whole like boy that cried wolf kind of storyline seems like such a bore and I didn't really enjoy it. <laughs> so that's really my only like downside to this. Um, the reading experience was fine, even though I do have these cheap uh, crappy versions, I still felt that they were pretty good. Um, as long as you treat them well and you're not like throwing them around, they should be fine and they should last you. And they're significantly cheaper. I mean, I got these used, so they were even cheaper still. But, um, yeah, these are pretty fair if you want to get into manga and not waste too much money. Uh, these are 15 bucks a pop retail, but I think you can get them for $10 on Amazon. So, uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in picking them up, I definitely recommend this. Um, uh, the similar titles that I can think of for this are probably going to be Fairy Tale, like I said. Seven Deadly Sins, it kind of also has that weird, like, stretched out style, which, uh, uh, I don't really know if that's a r good way to explain it, but I really can't think of any other way 
to like explain what I'm saying. And there, uh, there's also Magi, although Magi isn't really all that similar. Um, it does kind of bring up this whole like uh, exotic adventure feeling, which uh, Fairy Tale and Seven Deadly Sins also do to an extent. Although Seven Deadly Sins and Fairy Tale are more about the art style and the storytelling style being similar to One Piece than uh, just kind of the feeling of it. Um, but that's uh, just from this first volume and from watching anime for the other two, so I don't know. And yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, quick note, we did reach our goal for this month, which was 75, uh, which is super, super awesome. Thank you guys so much for the support. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you guys are new, uh, thank you for watching and sticking through to the end of the video. If you guys would please subscribe and comment down below, that'd be super awesome. Um, if you guys have read One Piece, please let me know in the comments and let me know what you guys think. Uh, try to keep spoilers to a minimum, but I don't mind if you guys spoil a little bit because uh, personally, I'm not uh, worried about it. So that's fine. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and see you guys later.